fellow bookworm, Satibra's Den. My name is Whitney, and we are reading The Ring by Danielle Still. I did not expect to enjoy this book as much as I have. I hope you are enjoying it as much as I am. I'm kind of sad because we are actually over halfway done. Um, when I broke up the chapter sets, I did it, you know, based on how many chapters there were, not by the number of pages. Um, and so the first set of chapters, um, the first two chapter sets, actually took up the bulk of the book and then the last two chapter sets really aren't that long um so yeah I'm kind of sad that it's almost over we're already over halfway through the book but really been enjoying it and really excited to see what comes so before we get into the discussion questions on this book just a reminder if you're not already please subscribe and hit the bell notification so you don't miss anything we do Throwback Thursdays where I revisit childhood books um, and I've been having so much fun with that like it's, it's such a fun thing to just revisit these books and everything and then Saturdays we are working on our series The Dresden Files and so right now we're on Great Peril. Um, my thoughts on the first half of the book should have been up Saturday and then my thoughts on the next half of the book will be up this Saturday. Um, before we jump into the fourth book. So definitely making our way through the Dresden Files, and I hope you are joining us for those as well. Really been enjoying these. And then as always, on Mondays, I like to introduce next week's weekly read. Um, and so this week, we are finishing up um, Four Summoner's Tales by Kelly Armstrong, Christopher Golden, David List, and Jonathan Mawberry. There's four different stories. I've already finished them, and they are so good. So check out my thoughts on this this Wednesday because I really enjoyed this. And if you haven't picked up a copy, um, you weren't sure you were waiting to see my thoughts, I'm telling you now, get a copy and then definitely come back and get my thoughts on Wednesdays because it was so much fun reading this. And then, of course, this Wednesday we are going to be reading Boogeyman by Gail Wilson. We're going to start that this Wednesday as well. I'm really excited to do this. If you saw last Monday's video, I read the synopsis, so in case you're interested, go check out that video and you can get an idea of what this book is about. But we're going to be reading this starting this Wednesday as well. And then next Wednesday, um, I'm excited to introduce First to Die by James Patterson. Of course, we read James Patterson um, for a weekly read already. We did Witch and Wizard, which is one of his young adult books. And he wrote it with somebody else, but I was very disappointed in that. And so I wanted to do one of his adult books because I have read him before and I've enjoyed him before. I'm not sure if I read First to Die or if I just bought it or somebody gifted it to me. I'm really not sure. It is pretty worn, but I don't remember reading it at all. So it's possible I did or it's possible somebody gave it to me. I don't know, but it was on my shelf and it's spooky season. So even though this isn't like paranormal spooky, it is a thriller and I'm really excited to re read it. But let me go ahead and read the synopsis for you guys so you can get an idea of what it's about and see if you want to pick up a copy and join me. So it says, you are about to begin James Patterson's most exciting thriller yet. In San Francisco, newlyweds are being stalked and slaughtered. Enter four unforgettable women, all friends. Lindsay, a homicide inspector in the city's police department. Claire, a medical examiner. Jill, an assistant DA. And Sydney, a reporter who has just started working the crime desk of the San Francisco Chronicle. Joining forces, pulling their talents, courage, and brains, they have one goal. To find, trap, and outwit the most diabolic, diabolical and terrifying killer ever imagined. So... Really excited for this one. Like I said, if you want to join me, we will be starting this next Wednesday. So you got a week and some change to get a physical copy if you need one. As always, check your local library, see if they might have it in stock. And then also check to see if you can get it kind in ki on Kindle or audio version. Because um, that's also a great way to participate in the weekly reads if you would like to. But you can go ahead and put this aside and go ahead and jump into the discussion questions for the ring. We're starting with chapter 14. With as terrified as she is, Ariana keeps it together until she is alone. What kept her so composed? And I think part of it is just how she grew, grew up, like kind of her breeding, so to speak. Um, you know, her class level, like there's kind of a certain expectation, even from a young age, that you kind of are composed and don't outwardly show like, 
big shows of emotions or anything like that. And so I think it's just kind of how she was trained growing up. And then also I think part of it is she does recognize she doesn't know what happened to her father. And she does recognize that she needs to keep up the facade in case he comes back. Because if she kind of breaks, then that's going to put him in more danger. So I do think she recognizes that as well, which is, helps her to keep it together. Because you know, obviously she is extremely terrified. She doesn't know what's going on. Um, and so that's definitely going to play into it. And at this point she's tired because she's been interrogated for hours. So... Number 15, could the situation in this chapter have ended differently if Walmart had let on who he was? And so I try to keep, you know, a spoiler light. Obviously, there is some spoilers as we talk about these chapters and these characters. In this chapter set, unfortunately, there's going to be big spoilers. I'm not going to say it outright in case you're watching and you kind of want to get an idea, but you are going to get a, you're going to know what happens later on as we do more questions. Um, so just be warned if you're not reading the book and you don't want spoilers, like, you might want to jump off now. Um, otherwise, you know, keep watching. It might entice you to read this book, which I strongly encourage you to do so. But, um, basically, I think if Walmart had let on who he was, it might have worked. Um, it might not have. They might not have believed him. Um, they might have thought he was lying to him, and same result. Or they might not have cared because... They didn't really care, like, they. it's not like they were reporting who was trying to cross the border illegally or anything like that. They were just kind of discarding of them. And so, um, I don't think they necessarily would have cared. They probably would have just taken the money anyway, and the end result would have been the same. Um, but there is a chance that maybe he could have used his position and they would have recognized, you know, his position. And he might have gotten out of it, but I seriously doubt it. And 16, what are the similarities between Manfred and Ariana? And so they've obviously both suffered at the hands of the Nazis. Um, they're both German, but they both suffered because of the Nazis. And they both lost family and loved ones. And they also both lost their home. Um, you know, Ariana, obviously more recently, where he, you know, his parents lost their home. And then he lost his home because of the war with his, his wife and such. But... Um, they both lost a lot, and it's because not only the Nazis, but the war as well, so. And despite everything, this is number 17, despite being in Hitler's army, is Manfred still a good man? And I really think so, um, and we'll see it going forward that he is. Uh, and I think, you know, it's hard because you, it's, you should judge somebody for how they choose sur to survive. Um, you know... Walmart fled with Gerard and that was super dangerous and a lot of people would call them, you know, traitors and, and such. Uh, at the same time, you know, you have Manfred who stayed and is part of the army and is kind of, you know, a higher up official in the army, but, you know, he really didn't have a choice. And at the same time, we also need good men like him on the wrong side because, I mean, think of how much worse it would have been for Ariana if he hadn't been in the position he was in. Um, it would have been a lot worse. So you do need good men, too, because they can make it a little bit better. Obviously, they're kind of powerless, in a sense, too, but they can do little things to help. Um, and so we do need good men on the other side, and a lot of them did not have a choice other than fleeing, um, which, you know, could cost them their life anyway. Um, and so, yeah, I think he's still a good man despite, you know, what he was fighting for and, and things like that. And let's see here. Um, number 18, what similarities are there between Ariana and Manfred's arrangement and that between her parents? Uh, and so initially, obviously, Ariana and Manfred are romantic. You know, there's no romantic interest there. But there was really no romantic interest with Cassandra and Walmart either, even though it was like a marriage, you know, and built on that, there still wasn't that romantic interest there. Like, you know, obviously they had kids and such, but that's because they were supposed to, essentially. Um, so it was more just kind of arrangement of convenience for them. Or with Ariana and Manfred, it's really more for safety, but still kind of a merger based on something besides romantic interest, if that makes sense. Um, and then obviously, you know, Cassandra did love Walmart in her own way, but it never developed where, um, or, 
you know, Cassandra and Walmart, where Manfred and Ariana, it did develop into obviously a romantic thing. Um, but yeah, I think it's just, you know, both women were in that situation because of necessity. Um, one for safety, one just because it was expected and that's what she was supposed to do. Um, but then also I think both men are significantly older. Um, so there's kind of that age gap that they're, they're dealing with there as well. Um, but then, like I said, it kind of branches off from there and results in two very different things. So, and number 19, can Manfred be trusted? And if so, will Ariana learn to trust him? And we obviously know the answer at this point after we finished reading the chapter set. But at this point, you know, chapter 19, I did not know um, what how it was going to play out. And I think at that point, I still felt like he was a good man. He could be trusted. And I did feel like, you know, he would earn her trust because his actions spoke louder than his words. And so by all the little things he did, that slowly earned her trust. Um, and so, yeah, at that point, I really felt like it, she was going to trust him. And he was a good man and he was trustworthy for sure. And number 20, Ariana and Manfred develop a relationship. As she puts it, she fell in love with her captor. Is this an apt description? And I don't think it's a good description at all. Like, I think it kind of, the way she describes it made me think of Beauty and the Beast. Um, where in this situation, he wasn't holding her captive. You know, he brought her to his home because it was the safest option for her. He was trying to save her, not necessarily hold her captive. Um, not in a certain sense, was she stuck? Absolutely. But not because of him, because of the other soldiers and Nazis and the whole war and everything. That's why she was stuck. It wasn't because of him. Like, he was doing what he could in a limited capacity, but he was never her captor. Was she captive? Definitely. But was he her captor? No. I don't agree with how she phrased it, um, but I do see kind of where she's coming from at the same time. So, And then 21, why do people celebrate slash throw parties even in the midst of war? And I think there's kind of several different reasons, but the main ones that come to mind, I think for like the well-off, they throw parties kind of as a sign of status, like the war can't touch them. Um, that it's kind of almost beneath them, like the war, you know, it's for the peasants, essentially. Um, and so it's almost like it can't touch us. But at the same time, I think they also do it in a similar manner to like people who aren't well off, who celebrate because it gives them something to live for and something to continue to fight for. Um, if you don't have, like, those small celebrations and that small spark of life, like, why are you fighting? Uh, so I think that's why people do celebrate during wartime and difficult times and everything like that. And let's see, much like her mother, why doesn't Ariana seem to grasp the reality of the situation? But I don't think, like, I, I do see it in a similar light as her mother where they're just kind of in denial and not willing to accept what is necessary um, but for Ariana, I think she, um, I just don't think she wanted it to touch what she had. Like, she'd already been through so much, and she finally found happiness and love, and she just didn't want to accept that the war was going to touch this too. And so I think she was more just in denial, because she's seen everything and so she knew just how bad it was where I think for Cassandra it was more kind of based on being a little bit more selfish and not realizing just how bad the situation was um until it was just too late and so that's kind of how I think of it where I think like I said Ariana like she was in denial just because she'd already lost so much and she didn't want to lose this too essentially um and 23, with all that happened, will Manfred and Ariana be able to look on their wedding with any fondness? <sighs> and so obviously I know what happens in the future, but I'm not going to say it again. Just, you know, trying to keep it spoiler light. Um, so the way I'm going to phrase my answer kind of reflects trying to keep it spoiler light. But I do think that they're not going to be able to look on their wedding with fondness. I think with how the war touched their wedding, that's always going to be in the forefront. Like, it's never going to be something, and I, 
you know, we see that's kind of what finally broke Ariana's, you know, and the bubble that they, that they were living in with their relationship and everything. Like, that finally broke, and, like, it does touch this, too. Like, she couldn't deny it anymore. Um, and so I don't think there's always going to kind of be that shadow over their wedding day, and they're not going to be able to look on it with fondness at all. Um, let's see. 24. Unlike her mother, why did Ariana choose to live? And I think she was just a little bit more prepared than her mother. Like, she had already seen so many horrors. So she was already kind of prepared. And like I said, with their wedding day and everything, that just kind of broke everything. Um, and so, like I said, she was a little bit more prepared. But I also think that she... Um, hadn't let anybody down where if she had chose not to live she would have um she would have broken her last promise and so she would have been letting people down if she chose not to live um where like with the mother she had already let everybody down with her choices and so she really felt like there was nothing to live for um where at this point you know that's maybe all ariana's living for but she's living for that promise and and not letting Letting people down, for sure. And let's see here. Um, 25. What kept Ariana pushing on, even as sick as she was? And again, it's just, it was her promise. It was her last promise. And it is all she had left. Um, and so I think that's just, she kept pushing because of that. Like, she wasn't going to give in. Like, she was gonna keep her last promise. And she was gonna get to where she was going, despite how sick she was. Um... You know, I think that's the only thing that kept her going. And maybe kind of an inkling, like, we don't know yet. It hasn't said flat out. But I have an inkling what's coming. And I think maybe she did as well, even though she didn't fully know. She was just so overwhelmed. Um, maybe that kind of has something to do with it, too, for sure. And let's see, number 26, the last question is... Jean Pierre Wright thinking there was a hidden message behind Manfred sending Ariana to him. And possibly, um, it's really hard to say. I think, you know, one, that's the only person he could truly trust with Ariana. And two, I think he did feel like he could give Ariana answers regarding her family. Um, when nobody probably nobody else could. Um, so I don't know if there was a true hidden message there or if that was it, you know, you know, just he's trusted him with the most important thing to him. Um, and then he also felt that maybe he could help Ariana get some answers. Um, but a hidden message, we, we don't know enough to know. And so it'll be interesting to see if that's revealed to us or not, but that's it for the discussion questions. I really hope you enjoyed this chapter set like I did. This week we are going to be reading chapters 27 through 39 uh, and then we'll discuss that next Monday before jumping into the final set of chapters. Uh, this week, I think the end of the week, the introduction for the book of the month for November should go up. So again, make sure you're subscribed and have the bell notification on so you are notified when that goes up. Um, but that will be going up. I'm going to video it right here. So um, as I'm finishing up this. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and leave you guys here. Happy reading, everyone. Bye.